hello. <clears throat> How is everyone doing? We are gonna make our yummy coconut treats today. I found two different recipes. One is in from my, my grandma's recipe book. And I always like to Google the recipes before I do them just to see if my grandma may have made a mistake or left something out. And I uh, found these recipes. I have like whipped cream or something up on my cupboard. Um, I found this recipe from McCormick that sounds a lot like these coconut treats but a little bit, um, a little bit of a variation to it. So I kind of mixed the two together and then um, went with it like that. Hello Heather, hi Corrine, hi Daddy-O. I'm just gonna share this video on my personal Facebook page really, really quick and then we will get going. So what I did earlier today is I did make a batch, half a batch of each of the recipes so that uh, they could be cooled outside in the garage so that we didn't have to wait on them tonight. You guys know I normally don't make things ahead of time, but with the different colors and the two different recipes, it was really easy for me to make them and not have like a huge abundance of these coconut treats. Plus, they're one of my mom's favorites of my grandma's, so they won't go to waste in any way, shape, or form, I'm sure of it. Um, it was kind of cool, obviously, that my dad ha let me open my Christmas present early because I need to be able to shape these into one-inch balls. And uh, in looking at the the cookie scoop that my dad got me, I was way off. Like, oh, the, the me doing like one and a half inches, they were humongous. They were probably like three inch balls that I was making for like my Mothra Washington balls and my Reese's balls. So we have a perfect one inch scoop that we get to use today. Um, hello, hello, everybody. How are you? You guys, every time I look, I can see I, for however reason today, I was mixing up the red dye in these coconut treats and I had like a perfect red teardrop on my eye and I didn't see it. So it sat there and penetrated my skin until my husband walked up to me and was like, what happened? Are you bleeding? And then, so it like has penetrated my skin. I've got red dye right under my eye. Hi, Tina, Melissa, Mary Jo, Sarah, Esther. Hello, we are making these coconut treats today. So like I said, I found two different recipes. One that has chocolate chips in the middle of it and one that does not. The main reason why um, the other recipe appealed to me, it actually wasn't about the chocolate chips. What appealed to me is the food coloring doesn't go directly into the cream cheese and powdered sugar. I like the idea of it not being saturated into the middle. Um, I'm not a huge fan of eating a lot of food dye because of the way it comes out the other end and it stains your teeth and stuff. So I try to avoid it. What I like about this other recipe is instead of dyeing the dough or the the stuff on the inside, it has you just do the 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 coconut flakes. So I was excited about that part of the recipe and that was the big seller for why I decided to do it. Are you looking for food, baby? Nope. Um, your Cornish game hen should be ready to go. You just need to season it and throw it in the air fryer. I sent your super easy recipe. I thought out a Cornish game hen for him because he bought them a couple of days ago and has wanted them, but he always forgets to thaw them out. So I thought it out and now he doesn't want to cook it, which I don't blame him. I should have done it before I got jumped on here. But I'm sure you can figure it out. Just grab, don't, um, I would pull out like a chopping block and so that you don't get water all over it when you cut it open. Whatever. You do you, babe. All right, you guys. So we're going to get started. These cream cheese coconut treats. So bear with me. Try to keep up. I am, it's going to get a little confusing because I am going to do... This recipe, I'm going to do half of one recipe and half of another because they are so similar. I um, am gonna start out doing everything together and then I'm gonna divide it up and start switching it up. So just keep up with me. But both recipes are on the description of this video and they are separated um, in the description so that if you like one way better than the other, one without chocolate chips or one without the dye, whatever it is, do whatever you works for your family. If you like the dye on the coconut flakes but you don't like the chocolate chips, then leave the chocolate chips out and just do the dye in the coconut flakes. Do whatever works for you. Um, either way, these are super yummy, delicious treats, coconut treats. So we're gonna start off with, um, <clears throat> my grandma's recipe calls for six ounces of cream cheese and the McCormick recipe calls for eight ounces of cream cheese. I just went with eight and then they both call for a stick of butter. 
So we're gonna do that and put these in here and we're gonna just mix those two together really fast. And you want it light and fluffy with the um, cream cheese and the butter together. So mix it until it's light and fluffy. Um, my friend that got the sous vide cooker, she's texting me asking questions about her sous vide, so I have to respond to it through my husband. So we're going to mix up our cream cheese and our butter. What I love about this recipe is you don't have to bake it at all. You don't have to eat it up. You don't need a stove. You don't need anything other than either a hand mixer or a KitchenAid mixer. Very good. Are you hungry for me? No. You want your bars out? Buzzies were in a box. Alright, so I'm just gonna scrape down the sides. We just want. He said no, he wasn't hungry. Light and fluffy and mixed together. My kids went on like a sugar bender yesterday, which never happens. And my four year old woke up this morning and puked and has had an upset stomach all day. And I think my, my, Two-year-old is down, going down the same road now. I don't, I don't think he feels all that well. Hello, Crystal, Tawny. Thank you for sharing. So we are making coconut treats tonight. Cream cheese coconut treats. So we're mixing our butter and our cream cheese together. If you're just now tuning on, um, this will get a little bit um, confusing because I am using two recipes. I'm using what I like from both recipes and making my own variations of it. But... I'm hoping they will both turn out. So we're gonna mix the cream cheese and our cream cheese and our butter together until it's light and fluffy. And then we're gonna add our vanilla and our powdered sugar. My grandma's recipe calls for a teaspoon of vanilla and the McCormick recipe calls for two teaspoons, I believe, of vanilla extract. Um, I'm gonna do like one and a half of vanilla just to kind of meet in the middle of that, you guys. Don't need to get crazy. Obviously, you guys can make these and make little variations, um, little changes to it as you see fit for your family. So mix that vanilla in, get it nice and incorporated. The McCormick recipe, thank you for sharing. Hello, Charlene and Sherry and Elaine and Macy. So we have mixed together our butter and our cream cheese and added our vanilla in. And my grandma's recipe calls for a pound of powdered sugar. I, I looked it up and depending on if your powdered sugar is sifted or not, it's about three and a half cups to four cups of powdered sugar equals a pound in just powdered sugar measurements. Um, and the McCormick, um, the McCormick recipe only calls for a cup of sugar. I did um, end up using about three cups in my recipe. So instead of four for a pound and instead of one for the McCormick recipe, I did three. So like I said, you guys, it gets confusing and it's gonna be a little weird, but once you see me make these, you guys can decide which recipe you like best. I picked mine based on the fact that the coconut flakes are what are dyed instead of this mixture. But I'm going to do both for you guys so you guys can kind of see. And I will um, try them out and give you guys kind of a taste test to tell you which one tastes better or what it tastes like. Um, always do it one at a time with your cups of sugar. You don't want to overwhelm your mixer. So just do one cup of powdered sugar at a time. Just start to mix it slowly. Scrape down the sides of your mixer. What I'm gonna do now that my um, now that my cream cheese and my butter are all um, fluffed up, I'm actually going to switch the head of my machine to my paddle attachment. The reason being for switching to a paddle attachment is mine comes with this little side scraper, which actually takes out a lot of the work for me because it scrapes down the side of the bowl for me, which is awesome. So we have one cup of powdered sugar in there. 
Like I said, we're gonna do three. We're gonna kind of meet in the middle of the two recipes. Nice and slow, you guys see how big of a mess powdered sugar makes. So you wanna do it nice and slow, one cup at a time, and just do on the lowest speed at first, and then pick it up. Get it nice and mixed in and incorporated. I'm gonna stop and just scrape down the top or top sides of my bowl. The bottom is getting nice and scraped up from my paddle attachment, which I love. So I will um, make sure I link this paddle attachment in the description of this video because it is to die for. Um, my phone is going to die. Speaking of to die for, um, Rory. My phone's gonna die, you guys. Thank you, thank you for the love on the apron. Um, Jody, we are not doing the giveaway yet, so there's no reason to comment your name, but you can say hello and tell me how you guys are doing. I am going to grab a longer um, charging cord. Just hold on. cord is long enough to reach my phone. We don't want this thing dying, but as long as I can plug it in somehow, right? Get that plugged in and see if we are charging. We are charging. Perfect. Can you still hear me? Can everybody still see me? I want to make sure that plugging it in didn't cause any problems. Hello, thank you, Sherry. Thank you guys for sharing. All right, so we are gonna do one more cup of powdered sugar in here. So like I said, I met in the middle of the two recipes. My grandma's calls for a pound of powdered sugar and depending on sifted or not sifted is three and a half to four cups. And the McCormick recipe that I was looking at only uses a cup of powdered sugar. So I went to three to kind of meet as much in the middle as possible. So always go nice and slow. Hang out with your daughter and your son at a birthday party, Daisy Joe. I have a birthday party to go to tomorrow. My friend's daughter, Marley, is turning two. Good, you guys can all see me and hear me. Perfect, perfect. All right, you guys. So we have this powdered sugar in here. So here is where we're gonna really, really start making this switch up. So we get this all mixed in and fluffy. My favorite thing to do is while you're mixing to um, slowly lift the head of your um, KitchenAid mixer up, which is dangerous, but I slowly lift it up so that the it like kind of cleans this off for you so you don't have to like bang it on the edges like I have been doing. And you just kind of lift it up and it cleans it off and, and keeps it in the bowl, which is nice. So we've got that all mixed in there. We've got our cream cheese, our powdered sugar, our butter, and our vanilla. So that's all in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull half of the batter out and I'm going to pour half of it about, I'm just gonna eyeball it, you guys. Pour half of it in a bowl off to the side. And then the other half I'm gonna leave in here. So the half that I leave in here, I am going to add food coloring to. Adding food coloring to it is my grandma's recipe. So that is the first recipe in the description of this video. She adds red and green. So what you would do with her recipe is you would divide your batter into two bowls and you would put red in one and green in the other. I did red earlier today. So there's my red. And then now I'm gonna do green. It says three drops. I had to use a little bit more than three of my red to get it a more holiday color. It was pink at first. So hello, Tiffany, welcome. So I'm just gonna squirt some green in there, you guys and let it mix around. While that is mixing around, for the McCormick recipe, so the other one that we have separated out right here, it calls for mini chocolate chips, which I didn't have, so I just stuck my chocolate chips in um, 
in the food processor and kind of broke them up and chopped them up a little bit. And then it calls for three fourths of a cup of mini chocolate chips in the McCormick recipe. So I did about a third of a cup earlier of mini chips in that recipe. So while that green is mixing around, I'm just gonna take a third of a cup and I'm gonna plop it into our other bowl and I'm just gonna get it all mixed in together and incorporated. Just mix it in good, doesn't need to be fancy. Just mix it in, kinda looks like cookie dough. So, the McCormick recipe is done for now. So what you do with this one is you put it in an airtight container and you're gonna put it in the fridge to chill or outside if your garage is cold like mine, stick it out there to chill for at least half an hour to an hour. You want it to be um, cold enough to handle. So that one's done. We're gonna get this all mixed in. I'm gonna scrape down the top sides of my bowl. There's a lot of dye on the edges, so I just wanna get that scraped down the best I can and get that green dye incorporated as best we can. It's on my um, paddle too. So we're gonna kinda just scrape that off so that it can get mixed in with the rest of the batter. I don't know what else to call it. I'm not really sure if it's batter or if it's like, I don't know. It's butter and cream cheese, so it's more like a frosting, but we're gonna turn it into little coconut candies. Yes, definitely, Sandra. I would say with this McCormick recipe, or even with my grandma's recipe, if you want to, I would just make sure you use, like if you do pecans, I would grind them up pretty thin because we are making just one inch balls. They're just little. So you want them pretty pulverized. You want them pretty chopped up if you're gonna add pecans. Yay, I'm glad your dad liked your giveaway. Just made the steak in the sous vide. I won from you and it's so dang tender and chocolate banana bread. I need to make that banana bread recipe that I posted on my site. I have so many bananas in my freezer and the bread looks amazing. So I might have my grandma help me when she comes to town. All right, you guys. So we have half our batter with chocolate chips. The other half of our batter, we have all green. So this is the main reason why I picked the McCormick recipe to incorporate it all because I am not a huge fan of eating a big ball of food dye, food coloring. Not that I think it's bad for you. I just don't want to do it. It's not appealing to me. So what I like about the McCormick recipe is the food coloring goes on to the, um, the, coconut flakes and that's what I really really liked about it that's what I liked about that recipe that was the change that really really caught my eye it wasn't really the chocolate chips that caught it I have never made sour cream raisin bars Kareen it sounds interesting it sounds yummy okay so what I'm gonna do I am going to pop these batters outside and then I'll be right back and I have some ready to roll in the coconut. All right. So like I said, I made some earlier today. Um, you guys know I don't typically make things ahead of time, but it takes about an hour for that stuff to chill and I didn't want to have to make two different videos and I wanted to do the two different recipes so it only made sense but to do these. So there is my grandma's recipe and here is the McCormick recipe. Here is the coconut that we're going to use for the McCormick recipe and then for my grandma's recipe we are just going to use regular flaked coconut without any dye on it. This is the flake coconut that I like to use that we get at the grocery store. Baker's coconut sweetened. Never made them but tried it once and they were yummy. It sounds yummy. I um, feel like I've probably tried one before as well, but I'm not sure. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab out a little piece of tin foil so that I have something to lay them on when I get them all rolled out. And then what you can do, you can put them in an airtight container and then you can either freeze them, refrigerate them. Um, they will, they can be at room temperature, you know, for a little bit of time if you have them out at a party or whatever, but I would keep them refrigerated until then, until a party. So what I'm gonna do, ooh, there's my ball. I forgot to put my coconut in my pan. So. They're all, they're actually was really loud a second ago, but they are all in um, the master bedroom, which is right here against the kitchen wall, but they have the doors shut, so you can't hear, but Rory is organizing his closet to donate some of his clothes because he has lost some weight and doesn't fit in them anymore, so he's been going through to donate them. All right, you guys, I may have pulled these out of my garage to soon but so they've thought out a little bit but it is going to be kind of a messy project but here's what they will look like if you do my grandma's recipe and then we will pop over and this is the McCormick recipe and pop it in our red coconut flakes and just cover it in the red coconut flakes and there you go so what i would say is definitely from the texture that i am dealing with with these right now i would say your best bet is to pop them in the deep freezer freezer before an event and then just pull them out just half an hour before the event. They aren't super pretty because the coconut obviously isn't going to lay flat, but they're just little balls of yummy, yummy gooeyness. They look delicious. They, they are really delicious. It's like cream cheese coconut balls. Uh, my boys are with my husband in the bedroom, helping him clean and organize and play in his things that he's got out because he's been going through our closet. So there's fun toys in there and all that fun stuff. So I'm just gonna do a couple more of these and then I think I'm gonna pop this into the deep freeze before I do any more because I left it out too long so it got super smushy, which isn't making it very easy. Yeah, so it's, I let it get too warm in our house. I did have it frozen and then I pulled it out and now they're nice and warm. But that's the recipe, you guys. I've got two of them done. I will um, finish the rest of these and post pictures for you guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy them and make them. They're super easy to make. All they take is an hour for you to um, freeze them up and put them through their coconut and then put them on this paper and keep them, I would say keep them in the deep freeze until you're ready to serve them. And then they're just little bite-sized, yummy coconut treats, super delicious. But I am going to pop these other two bowls outside and then we'll do a giveaway and then I let you guys have the rest of your Saturday night. under my computer <laughs> okay but I will finish those up and get pictures off to you guys and then I will let you guys know which ones taste the yummiest the ones with the um the ones with the chocolate chips are the ones without but 
we will do this giveaway. Tomorrow I'm making my gluten-free sugar cookies. Last night we made our peppermint sugar cookies and they are so good. I shouldn't have made as many as I did because then I will end up eating them all. So this big container, it's like, it's stacked five high of peppermint sugar cookies and they are so yummy, so good. This is what they look like before you put any frosting on them or anything. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Nice and golden brown on the bottom and then little peppermint chips throughout them that are so delicious. But we're gonna do our giveaway. Um, I went, I started at 7. I said I was going to be on between 6 and 7, and it was, I started right at 7, Belle. That was what I did. So, <clears throat> let's get our giveaway going so then I can let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your evening. How is everyone doing? I hope everyone is enjoying their evening and are excited for the holiday season. Christmas baking is the best. Yes, yeah, perfect size for something sweet, you guys. Just this little ball, perfect little poppable size if you want something super sweet and yummy. Super easy to make, you guys. Super easy to make. The only thing you have to do is chill them for an hour, but other than that, it was just turning on my mixer and pouring stuff in. Super easy. Um, yes, Crystal. Definitely ready to be shipped to you. They look good. Those cookies are so good, you guys. I have so many, so many cookies. Um. My giveaway winner that asked for the lemon bars, she liked them so much that she forgot to take a picture before she ate them all. But she said she ate all of them but four and shared the four with somebody else. Hi, baby. Hi, Mom. Your dinner is over there. Not until after dinner. Not until after dinner. Yeah, those are going to be yummy, but they're not ready yet. Can you say please? Can you say please? <laughs> I offered it. Like, I handed it to you. Oh, you wanted like this. Say okay, please. Well, now he's acting like he doesn't want it, you guys. Puppy chow. I've never made puppy chow. I actually don't even think I've ever eaten it. No, Bill. We haven't done it yet. Yes, Kingston. Uh oh, you better tell Dad. I can't deal with that right now. All right, let's get started, you guys. Yes, that's Grayson. That's my two-year-old. He is awesome. Um, he is a little emotional today. I'm not sure why. I think it's because he's hungry, and he wants to eat like he did yesterday, a bunch of um, junk food, but I made him a ground beef quesadilla, and he does not want it. So, who knows what... I can't have him screaming in here, okay? Thank you. We're just going to do the giveaway really quick. Should we hide? You hide. All right, Bill. I've got you. Brooke Sibley, I've got you. All right. Brooke Sibley, Farisa Irwani, welcome. You are new here. How are you? How is everyone? I hope you guys are enjoying the calm before the holiday. This is Grayson. He is going to be helping me tonight. I hope, I wish he could type for me because that would be awesome. Um, so I've got Heather Frank, Teresa Hartbauer. That's just coconut, baby. Sherry by Conan. Sherry by Conan, Sharon Lynch. You guys, those coconut treats were so easy to make. Yeah, I've been wanting to try it to make puppy chow. I know it's super easy. I just never have the stuff to put in it, so I never have a chance to make it. But now I at least have the Czech cereal. Isn't that what you use? And then what else? Thank you, Kareen. That is so sweet. My sweet, sweet boys. Daisy Joe, Crystal Sewell. Grayson, your dad is eating your dinner. See well. Kareen, I've got you. Kareen, Elisa Clark. Um, Crystal 
Marie. I will be starting a new rule come the first of the year, um, just to make it a little more fair from the uh, for the other people that enter in. If you win within the month, um, you can't be entered into the giveaway. That will start the um, beginning of January. We will start that just so that we don't have double winners, which we have been getting a lot lately. And I want everyone to be able to win. Um, so that's just going to be something new that I do. Elisa Clark, Crystal Marie, Justine Bucci, Becky Geitzen, Mary Jo, Heather Frank. I got you, Heather Frank. What? Yeah, he's supposed to practice that for therapy, so. <laughs> Mary Jo, Heather Frank, Den Dennis Bateau or Denise Bateau, I never remember which one. Denise, Charlene, how are you doing? Thank you, Feldahl. I'm just gonna type it that way so that I remember how to say it, Feldahl. Um, Teresa says, hi, Grayson. Hi. Sandra, the F you, yeah, it's so funny. It's like, it's the funniest thing ever that my computer will not let me type F you. Hi. Falmer. Hi. So funny. It just drives me nuts. Hello. Connie, Martin. Hello. Everybody say hi to Kingston. Hello, Kingston. Hello. Connie, Hello. Martin, Tiffany. Good one. Across. Grayson, what are you doing, buddy? Hey. It's just coconut. Tiffany, Eckroth, Macy, Ghostface Mace. That's what my husband calls her. Tanya. Rory, really? That was your son's dinner. I'll make them now. We don't have the stuff. I bought it at Cadova. <laughs> he's eating the entire quesadilla, you guys, that I made for our son. Because he's too lazy to cook his corn Cornish game hen. Corn Cornish? Cornish. All right, Macy, Tanya, Tammy. Tammy, Elisa Clark, I got you. He is adorable. Sherry LaPointe. He is just like scooping this coconut into his mouth. He's gonna be all red and crazy looking. All right, Sherry LaPointe. Macy says, hi, King. Hi. Corrine says, hi, buddy. Yep, I had Corrine, just wanted to make sure. Crystal says, hi, boys. Tammy says, hi, King. Hi. Sherry says hi. Tanya says hello, cutie. Teresa says hi, cutie. We've got hi. Jesus, Medina. Hi. Hi. Kingston, are you ready for Santa Claus? Elisa wants to know. Hi. I'm ready for him. Um, Bill Winfield says hi, Kingston. Hi. Heather Frank says hi, cuties. Daisy Jill, hello, my friend back home has a Grayson and a Kingston. That's funny. Yep, my Grayson and my Kingston. Daisy Joe, Mary Jo, such a cutie. Hi, family, says Melissa. Hi. Hi, I'm ready. If you I'm are Kingston. typing your name or um or a sweet note to Kingston or Grayson, all you have to do is put an emoji and then it doesn't filter as badly. Oh, oh so upset. Mommy took him off the counter. So I've got Sharon Leach. Your boys are adorable. Thank you. They are sweet. They are my pride and my joy. Even when they are whiny and fussy. I know, buddy. I know. All right, you guys. I'm going to go through these names. I know that there's probably some that I'm missing. So if I'm missing you, please, please, please put an emoji when you comment your name. And just make sure that you're not getting filtered out and not trying to skip you on purpose at all. So, just, I'm going to read through these names, if it'll ever let me scroll up. I'll read through them, and if you don't see, if you don't hear your name, you guys, you guys, please, just five more minutes. Thank you. Love you. All right, so if I um, read through the names and you don't hear your name, comment your name with a an emoji, and I will add it. So, we've got some that I'm going to add right now. Jenny Castillo. Like I said, I'm not skipping you guys on purpose. It just sometimes it filters for whatever reason. Um, I know he was the center of attention and he, yeah, he wants the treats. He wants the center of attention. He was mad I took the red coconut flakes away from him. Was the worst part of it. Tracy, 
Fourth time is the charm, I guess. All right, so we're gonna read through this. If I still don't say your name, comment with an emoji. So we got Bill Winfield, Brooke Sibley, Farisa, Farisa Irwana, I wanna say that autocorrected, Jenny Castillo, Tracy Klein, Heather Frank Kingston, please be quiet, Teresa Hartbauer, Sherry Baikonin, Sharon Leach, Corrine Hart, Daisy Joe, Crystal Sewell, Elisa Clark, Crystal Marie, Justine Bucci, Becky Geitzen, Mary Jo, Denise Bateau, Charlene Feldahl, Sandra Fulmer, Connie Martin, Tiffany Eckroth, Mace, Tanya Navarez, Tammy Condon, Sherry LaPointe, Jesus Medina, Melissa Maltier, and Reagan Sheffield. I got Tracy. We got Kathy coming in. Kathy came in. Connie Martin, I believe I said your name, Connie, but let me double check. Yep, I've got Connie Martin already. You made those peppermint cookies, Kathy. Did you like them? Melissa, I've got you. Melissa Malt Mal Maltier. 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 I got you, Melissa. Looks like I'm not seeing any duplicates yet. I'm gonna give it a little bit of time. Um, let's say Kathy, can you pick a number between one and ten? How is everyone doing with their baking? Everything has been good at my house. Um, I started a grocery list. My mom and my grandma land Monday. My dad lands tomorrow. We bought his ticket last night. So my dad lands tomorrow. My mom and grandma come Monday. So I started my grocery list of just odds and ends to get for meal time and drinks because we all drink different stuff. So I started that grocery list. So I'll go to the grocery store tomorrow. Hopefully if I can face it, I'll try to get out of the house before church gets out so that I I can kind of beat the rush is my hope you'll be am i not tomorrow doing christmas shopping melissa have fun i should renee um medina i should take my kids to the mall tomorrow early too before church gets out and take a picture with santa claus because we do it every year and we haven't done it yet kingston would you like to go see santa claus tomorrow yes all righty all right, you guys, I just am waiting for the number between one and 10. Um, it usually filters out the person I tell to pick a number between one and 10. So, um, Kathy, if you've posted your number between one and 10, can you do so again with an emoji so that I can see it? Aaron Pruitt, hello, Aaron. Daisy Joe, it will be a madhouse. It will always be a madhouse. Um, as long as we can get in and out, even if like I have to stand in line and my husband walks the boys around the mall and I just call him when it's their turn, um, just to get it done. Uh, the grocery store, I'm hoping I can beat the rush. Like I said, what I usually do is I order my groceries online so that I can take my time and make sure that I get everything on my list. And it also stops me from getting things that aren't on my list. So I might do that tonight. I might sit down on the couch if I have time and make, um, do an online grocery delivery. Erin, I got you. You saw Santa today, Sherry LaPointe. That's awesome. Kathy yeah. says seven. Hello, yeah. Betty. Yeah. Welcome, you guys. I finished my cream cheese coconut treats. All I'm waiting is for them to um, cool a little bit better in the deep freeze because they were a little mushy. So when I rolled them in my coconut, um, they were pretty difficult to roll. But this is what they will look like if you use my grandma's recipe. They will be a red ball with white coconut flakes on the outside. If you use the McCormick recipe, it will be a chocolate chip white ball with red coconut flakes on the outside. So dealer's choice. It's totally up to you. They're both equivalent in recipe. One has chocolate chips, one does not. But hey, you could add chocolate chips to my grandma's or you could take the chocolate chips out of the McCormick's or like one of my other watchers said, you could put nuts in there. You know, it's really just up to you what you want in there. They are very flexible food. Hey, just finished shopping in my nut. How did it go, Jamie? How did it go? Thankfully, I've got all my shopping done except for grocery. So making a list and checking it twice. All right, so she picked seven. Kathy picked seven. So remember, if I pull your name, I do remove it so that you cannot be pulled again. So once I pull you once, you will not see your name again. And we will do this. So number seven. Number one is Melissa. Let's do this. Number one is Melissa. Number two 
is Jamie. Number three is Corrine. Number four is Denise. Number five is Heather. Number six is Reagan. And drum roll, number seven is Charlene. Charlene Feldahl. Charlene, send me your shipping information or send me what days you will be working at the salon and I can bring a gift by to you. Also, like I said to you guys, if you ever win a giveaway and you want me to bake something for you that I've done in the past, just shoot me a message with your shipping information and what recipe you want me to do. I did have some near crust lemon squares and I sent them off to her. So she sent me a message back, said they were awesome, phenomenal, that she had eaten them all and didn't even get a chance to take a picture. So awesome, Charlene. Congratulations. If you want baked goods, let me know. I will make you anything or I will just pick you out an awesome gift and send it to you or I can bring you an awesome gift while you are working. That is your call as well. Congratulations, congratulations. So these are our coconut cream cheese balls. I made three of them. The other ones I want to be a little more hard before I get to scooping. But another important thing is the size of these are supposed to be an inch. So here is a an example of how big that is because i'm awful at this you guys my, i make my balls way bigger than they're supposed to be this is smaller than a tablespoon this scoop can go inside of my tablespoon so if that gives you a little bit of a go by that's about how small you want them to be you want them just little poppable sizes for you to eat if that helps congratulations um Tomorrow is gluten-free sugar cookies. So if you are gluten-free, you know somebody gluten-free and you would like to make them a treat, tune in tomorrow. I um, have a birthday party to go to from four to eight. So I will be popping on before then. I will probably jump on, you know, my goal, I really would like to just get them done and frosted and cooled. So let's aim for, I don't remember what time I said on my page. Maybe one, maybe two, maybe noon. I don't know. Before four. That's all I know. Thank you guys. Have an awesome Merry Christmas if I don't see you guys before then. But we're going to do gluten-free, sugar-free, or gluten-free sugar cookies that are frosted. They're frosted sugar cookies. And then um, Monday, we're going to make just these yummy, easy, super easy, cheesy pull-apart rolls. They'll take 10 minutes tops to make these cheesy pull-apart rolls. And then the holiday will be ours, you guys. So hang out with me tomorrow or Monday. We'll do a couple more giveaways, I am sure of it. And then we will enjoy our holiday season. Those peppermint cookies are to die for, so please try them. And thank you guys for watching. Bye.